Steam tables are very powerful tools used by engineers and physicists when we want to determine the thermodynamic properties of a system given certain conditions, such as temperature and pressure. And what I'm going to do in this video is introduce how we can use steam tables in practice and uh, go through an example problem in which we're trying to determine how much power will be required ideally by a compressor to uh, make a steam that has been heated to 250 degrees C be compressed from one bar to three bar by an adiabatic reversible compressor. And to begin with, steam tables are uh, gen like it's a, there are two main types. We've got saturated steam tables and with a saturated steam table, what you do is you put in a temperature or a pressure and you get out the saturated, there are the saturation properties of the steam at those conditions. And that's not the kind of steam tables we're going to be using in this example. We're going to be using superheated steam tables because we've already, the steam already exists in one phase and the temperature is sufficiently high and the pressure is sufficiently uh, low such that we don't run the risk of the steam condensing. And so what we're going to start with is the given information that we have. And what we see is that we've got steam coming in at 250 degrees C and one bar, and we want to compress this to three bars. And I should correct this in my table. Uh, and we are going to be performing this on 10 kilograms per second of steam. And we need to know what mass of steam we're working with because these saturated steam tables and uh, superheated steam tables give us units in specific enthalpy and specific entropy, which refers to a per mass basis. And so that's a very important consideration or note to make. And so what we'll find is that if we have two thermodynamic properties, we can get the other two. And so we just need 2x to get all the properties. And sorry for the poor handwriting, but we get the gist of it. And so what we find is that if we look at our steam table at 250 degrees C, in a pressure of one bar, we arrive at this element here in our steam table. And the last two elements are the ones that we're interested in, in this case. What it tells us is that our enthalpy, our specific enthalpy, is 2,975 kilojoules per kilogram. And the specific entropy of our steam is 8.5. 0.033 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And what I hope we get from this is we only have, or in our problem statement, we were only explicitly given one outlet condition of our steam. And so if we look back to our problem statement, we're told that we're using an adiabatic and reversible compressor. And what this tells us is that it is isentropic. And therefore, delta S equals zero. Therefore, S in equals S out. And with that, we now know that our outlet specific entropy will be approximately 8.032 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And so with this information now, we're going to look at our steam table. We're going to look at the three bars. And we find that this element here, or this block in our steam table, is very close to it. And so what that tells us is that um, our, our specific enthalpy out is going to be 3,275 kilojoules per kilogram. And the outlet temperature, we can just look up and see that that must be 400 degrees C. And so, as I said, with just two properties, in this case, with our 
outlet pressure and our outlet specific entropy, we were able to fully define the temperature and specific enthalpy of our stream. Moving on, if we wanted to determine what the minimum power requirement is for our compressor, what we do is we're going to uh, keep this, these tables here. Uh, we will note how we can de determine the ideal work done over time, I abbreviated W dot ideal, is equal to F, the mass flow rate, times H out minus H in. And in this case, what we find is we've got 10 kilograms per second and we're multiplying this quantity by 3,275 minus 2,975 kilojoules per kilogram. And what you'll note is that this is equivalent to 3,000 kilojoules per second, which is equal to 3,000 kilowatts. And so this is the ideal case in which we have an reversible, an adiabatic uh, compressor. And in the real world, this isn't usually the case because to make something reversible, we have to perform an operation so incredibly slowly that uh, the system reaches equilibrium infinitesimally or infinitely many times. But it will at least get us an idea of best case scenario, we're going to need a power supply, for instance, that can handle 3000 kilowatts if we wanted to uh, perform, I'm sorry, in this case, it's just three kilowatts, uh, three kilowatts to perform this operation. And then a final note I'll make uh, when we're looking at the uh, required power of a system is when we're analyzing work done over time, work is positive when done on the system. And so if we were running an electrical plant, for instance, and we had a turbine instead of a compressor, and we were lowering the pressure of our stream, what we would get is we would find that an ideal turbine could extract three kilowatts of electricity from this uh, decompression, taking a stream if we just reversed our compressor. And so uh, in that case, our work would have a negative term, be, would be negative because work is being done by our system. And so um, that's an important note here. And then also uh, a final note is this adiabat term tells us that we have no heat flow into or out of our compressor, uh, but in the real world, if we had, we, we know that we get frictional losses and heat transfer into and out of our compressor. And so that will cause your outlet temperature to differ from what we would expect from this back of the envelope calculation. But for the sake of getting an idea of it, um, steam tables do provide or prove to be quite useful to us. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.